for watching Henry AI Labs. This video will cover finite Markov decision processes in the context of our book, Introduction to Reinforcement Learning by Richard Sutton and Andrew Bartow. This is chapter three of that book, and this is a part of a video series going chapter by chapter through this book, explaining some of the key concepts and ideas. A link to a free PDF version of this book is in the description, as well as a print version available for purchase. The key concepts of this chapter are seeing how reinforcement learning problems fit into this Markov decision process framework, pictured here, and understanding the Markov property, how we have these well-defined transition probabilities in our MDP, the idea of discounting future rewards, uh, how you would manage an episodic task compared to a continuing task, and then this idea of solving for the optimal policies, the, you know, the optimal decision-making framework, and the optimal value functions using these Bellman optimality equations. So this is the Markov decision process given here as a recycling robot. So we've seen this uh, diagram of the agent environment interface where the agent sends an action to the environment and gets back a state and a reward. Well, in this case, compared to the chapter two where we looked at uh, contextual bandits and K-arm bandits with no context, we're now looking to see how the state transitions as a function of the action we take. So in the recycling robot example, the robot has two states, high battery charge and low battery charge, and it can make these decisions to either wait where it won't uh, deplete its battery, or it can go search for garbage, where it runs this risk with the transition probability, one minus alpha, of going from the state high battery to low battery. And if it chooses to search with low battery, it has this probability, the transition probability of one minus beta of depleting the battery all the way and going to having a reward of minus three for doing that. One of the key components to this Markov decision process is the Markov property. So what the Markov property is, is it basically says the all the information that you need to predict the future is contained in the current state representation. So using conditional probabilities shown here, we can summarize the Markov property as saying that the probability of the reward given the state at this time step, say t, is equal to the probability of the reward given the current state, the previous state, and then all the previous states that have ever existed in time. So basically, to just summarize it, the Markov property says that all the information you need is given in the current state. So in the example of our recycling robot, it doesn't matter when the robot is in the high battery charge state, it doesn't matter whether it just came from high or if it just, uh, just came from low and has just recharged or if it has just come from waiting. All that matters is the current state to predict the future. Another key of Markov decision processes are this, is this dynamics function P. So the dynamics function is basically uh, telling you how the environment is transitioning with respect to the different actions you take, as well as the rewards you can expect to get as it's transitioning from state to state with respect to the action taken. So from the four argument dynamics function, which is get the uh, next state and the reward given the current state and the action taken, you can also derive other things you might want to know about the Markov decision process, such as the next state probability given the state action pair, uh, the reward for a state and action, and the reward for a state action next state uh, tuple. The dynamics function of a Markov decision process is probably better explained through the use of a concrete example like the recycling robot. So in this case, we're looking at a table of state action and next states and the probability of going into this next state given a state action pair and the reward achieved by this uh, state action next state uh, tuple. So the first entry of being in the current state high and taking the action search corresponds to this path on the Markov decision process uh, illustration. So we're in the current state of having a high battery charge and we decide to go search for trash. So if we find the trash, we receive this reward, our search, in both cases, but we also have this probability of transitioning from the high battery charge to the low battery charge with this one minus alpha parameter, or essentially staying in the next state of high with this alpha parameter. Now that we have an understanding of the transition probabilities of going from one state to the next with respect to the actions we take in the state we're currently in, now we'll formally define our idea of expected reward or return, denoted g sub t. So as we've seen in many of the reinforcement learning cases, we constantly receive a reward from the environment at every time step. So the return of the expected reward in total is the summation of these rewards we achieve at each time step. So in this case, if we have an episode with t time steps, it's just a summation of all the rewards up to time step t. So there are two different kinds of tasks that we're going to uh, formally define and distinguish from each other, and that's episodic and continuing tasks. And we'll use the cart pull balancing example to show how you might uh, structure cart pull balancing as an episodic task or a continuing task. So if you've messed around with the OpenAI gym, this is an episodic uh, implementation of the cart pull balancing problem. Basically, you get a plus one uh, reward for every time step the pull is balanced, and when the pull tips over, the episode is ended, and then it just restarts back to the middle. And this is how the OpenAI gym allows you to interface with cart pull balancing. But another way of doing it might be to have a continuing task where the reward is zero all the time, and then minus one when it tips over. So we'll use this idea of discounting 
in order to reward the agent for keeping the, uh, the pole balanced for many time steps. So this is done with this uh, gamma discount factor. So we've seen this idea of return g sub t as being the summation of rewards over a series of time steps. So now we're going to trade off immediate and future reward through the use of this gamma parameter. So basically, if you imagine the gamma parameter is closer to 1, like 0 0.9, then a 0 0.9 squared is 0 0.81, I think. It's not so uh, discounted, but say the gamma is 0 0.5, then gamma squared is already 0 0.25. So you see how gamma gets closer to zero, the future rewards uh, matter less and less to the overall return of the agent. So then one key idea with this new notation of introducing discounting is that we can factor out the gamma from a sequence of rewards at different time steps using this notation to have our return is equal to the reward at the next time step plus the discount factor times the expected return at that next time step. And this con consistency condition of g sub t equals r sub t plus 1 plus gamma times g sub t plus 1 is the key idea to the Bellman equations, which are one of the hugest, uh, most important ideas in this chapter. In addition to discounting rewards, we can unify episodic and continuing tasks by using an absorbing state in our Markov decision process. So what this gray box represents is converting an episodic uh, task into a continuing task by just having the end of the episode uh, loop infinitely and receive zero reward at every time step. So now that we have this idea of our discount of return and our transition probabilities, we can solve for the optimal value functions and policies using this idea of the Bellman optimality equations. So the Bellman equations are basically this idea of breaking our current expected reward g sub t into the reward at the next time step plus the uh, discount factor times the expected return from that state. So this is probably the key idea here to the Bellman equations, is basically you're computing the expected value of this state as a function of all the next states that it can transition into. So it's an idea derived from dynamic programming of uh, you know, shortcutting the equations needed by just using this one step look ahead. So that's why we see things like the uh, backup diagram for the value function of this policy pi at state s is just given based on the next states it might achieve with respect to the different actions it can take. So all these details of the equation show is just the policy, meaning the action it takes given the state and the summation of the next states, basically the probability distribution over the next states and rewards given this state action pair. And then we have our reward at that step plus the discount factor times the expectation of our uh, future rewards from this new state uh, S prime. Now we'll look at a concrete example to show how the Bellman equations can be used to find the value of every state given a certain policy. So in this case, our policy or our mapping from states to actions is random, meaning that we're choosing up, right, down, left, all with the same probability of 0.25 shown here in the calculation. So what the Bellman equation will do is we'll solve for the expected return of a state. In this case, we're going to look at how it uh, derives 2.3 for this state as a function of the reward for that state plus the discount factor times the uh, expected return of all the subsequent states that it might go to, and then the probabilities of it going to that state. So when we're in this middle state, we receive uh, zero reward. We only receive reward when we're on A transitioning into A prime, or B transitioning into B prime, or if we fall off of the map, we receive a negative reward. So from here, we look ahead to our subsequent states. We can either go here, 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 or here. So from these different states, all with the same probability of 0.25, of, uh, of transitioning into this probability, we have this summation, which is our uh, g sub t plus 1, and then we multiply it by a 0 0.9 gamma discount factor, and then we add it to the reward at this state, and this gives us our estimate of 2.3 of for uh, this state, or the value of this state, using the Bellman equations, looking ahead one step to the subsequent states, and using those to evaluate uh, the state at the current step. In the grid world example, we're looking at the estimating the values of each state uh, and then with respect to these different actions of moving up, uh, right, down, or left. But it's also helpful to have an understanding of the difference between value functions and then state action functions. So in the example of the uh, golf problem, we have the uh, value function if all the action we take is to putt. We have this kind of contour map of our expected rewards at each location of the map compared to if we have this... Uh, action of using the driver, we see a different kind of contour map where in this case it's better to use the putter but we're still using the uh, driver compared to the putter. So this golf example is really just good to get a concrete example of the difference between value functions and then how uh, 
adding different actions can change this with uh, the state action functions or the Q functions. So we've seen how the Bellman equation can be used to compute the values of states as a function of the successor states. But now we're going to look at the Bellman optimality equation, which is a way of solving for the optimal values of the, of the states in the, uh, in the environment. And this is denoted V sub star uh, S to T plus 1, or V sub star of S. So basically what this is, is taking the max A, or meaning taking the action which is the, you know, has the best reward at each of the uh, states in order to maximize our reward. So from the state where we have a high battery charge, we either take the actions of waiting or searching, and that's given right here in the uh, uh, V star of H, or the optimal value function estimate of H as the maximum reward with the actions that it can take. So the way this top uh, line of the argument is defined is this is the reward given by searching plus the gamma times the, for the discount factor times the expected reward for where the next state might be. So for example, we have the uh, alpha probability of returning back to this high state. So then we're back in the same uh, H state and we have our value estimate of that state. But then we also have the one minus alpha probability of going into this uh, low battery charge state. So we have our value estimate of that state. And then contrarily, we have the weight uh, decision or the action where we receive this reward, R sub weight, and then we have plus the gamma times the expected return for the new state that we're in, which in this case is always going to be returning us to this state of high battery. Using the Bellman optimality equations leaves us with this system of equations that we can use to solve for the optimal values at each state. So once we have this table of the optimal values at each state, it's easy to construct a policy, an optimal policy, which is basically just taking uh, the greedy decision to move into the state with the highest value. So for example, if you're in this state you, uh, of 19.8 of the value estimate, you would move either up or left to the higher value state at 22.0. So with nearly all interesting problems, it's actually computationally intractable to explicitly solve the system of equations like this. So in our recycling robot case, we only have two states, so we can, and only uh, three actions in the low battery state and then two actions in the high battery state. So it's not that complex to construct this system of equations for the Bellman optimality equations. But if we have games like backgammon with 10 to the 20 states, we can't just explicitly uh, solve for the optimal values to take in every state. Thanks for watching this explanation of finite Markov decision processes. Chapter 3 in our book, An Introduction to Reinforced Learning by Richard Sutton and Andrew Bartow. Please subscribe to stay tuned to the series as we follow along with chapters 4 through 17. And please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and artificial intelligence videos.